ओके सो टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द स्टेप्स ऑफ इरेथ्रोपोइसिस ओके नाउ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट द स्टेप्स ऑफ इरेथ्रोपोइसिस यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट फर्स्ट टेल मी वन थिंग हाउ विल यू स्टेन द सेल्स व्हिच आर व्हिच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन इरेथ्रोपोटिक स्टेजेस लिसन we will have to you know understand this basic concepts that whatever we do we will have to know that every cell every cell has basically two compartments okay that is cytoplasm and another is nucleoplasm okay now you should understand this again that in the cytoplasm proteins are abundant in the cytoplasm proteins are abundant okay proteins are abundant as proteins are abundant most of the proteins behave like a base okay we have discussed it in cytoplasmic videos okay now listen that's why that's why the cytoplasm is basic in nature and nucleoplasm is acidic in nature okay now we should also understand one thing that to stain a cell basically in any laboratory we use a very cheap dye which is known as hematoxylin okay and eosin right now listen hematoxylin is actually a basic dye and it is blue in color b for blue b for basic okay and eosin is actually an acidic dye acidic dye and it is red in color when stained okay now listen that means suppose if i draw a cell if i draw a cell then which part suppose if i draw a cell and these are the two components this is nucleus and this is cytoplasm which component will be blue and which one will be red this one will be red right because cytoplasm is basic in nature and eosin the acidic dye will react with base right and the nucleus and the nucleus is acidic in nature therefore it will react with blue that is base that means you should always understand that in a cell there are two compartments that is nucleus and other is cytoplasm cytoplasm is basic in nature and nucleus is acidic in nature due to due to the acidic nature basic dyes will react with these acids and due to basic nature acidic dyes will react with this now listen therefore he staining therefore hematoxylin and eosin staining hematoxylin and eosin staining is called double staining okay is called double staining that means using one simple stain okay hematoxylin and eosin using one simple stain okay we are staining both the you know compartments okay why i have discussed this because we need this right now okay now we are going to discuss the erythropoietic stages okay now listen where erythropoiesis takes place in the bone marrow right now listen when we are talking about erythropoiesis when we are talking about erythropoiesis you should always understand that when we are talking about erythro oasis stages okay you should always understand this basic thing that is there are actually four things four major things involved in this discussion okay number 1 number 1 characteristics of each cell 
this is the number one point we will discuss we will discuss the electroplytic stage on these four factors okay number one is characteristics of each cell which we will discuss number two number two is we will have to you are confused okay listen we will have to discuss yes we will have to discuss some basic things that is its size its size that is size of the cells third point we need to discuss is days that means time okay time taken to complete erythropoiesis okay and the fourth one is in the fourth one is we will have to know the control of erythropoiesis control of erythropoiesis okay so now listen when we will discuss erythropoietic stages you should understand that at first we will discuss these three things at a time we will discuss these three things it should not you know disturb your aesthetic views okay now we will at first discuss these three things then after that we will come to the special portion that is control of erythropoiesis okay that is the role of erythropoietin okay the hormone which is secreted by peritibular capillary bed of kidney okay now, now let's talk about erythropoiesis with respect to these three things okay let's start listen no need to remember if you mug up these things no you will never understand okay don't mug up these things if somebody is telling you to mug up then i don't know whether he is a teacher or not that's a very basic thing you need to understand because you cannot mug up everything there are many you know things which are involved here listen the the mother of every subject is actually physics okay now listen if i if i start the biophysics of these staining things okay will which i will do you will be confused because these are very tough things why because many types of bondings are involved which are here to be discussed here but right now we will just talk about the basic process and the staining and how does this cell look in an H stain that is we'll talk about each cell which is developed during erythropoietic stage and we'll talk about its structure when we view it under a microscope using hematoxylin and eosin stain okay now listen so we'll start with a stem cell which is called we'll start with a stem cell which is called pluripotent stem cell you know what do you mean by the term pluripotent and totipotent we have already i i, I already to, told you in the earlier you know lecture that is we will be discussing today pluripotent difference between pluripotent stem cell and totipotent stem cell right this is going to be a very short introduction we'll talk about these things when we will talk about stem cell biology okay but listen what is pluripotent stem cell right now understand this suppose if i tell you this is a cell okay this is cell a and this is cell b okay and suppose this is a suppose this is an organism not humans okay this is an organism and this organism has 400 different types of different types of cells now listen now if i tell you this a cell can give rise to all 400 cells all 400 different types of cells which are present in this organism but if i tell you that b cell give rise to 200 out of this 400 cells which one is pluripotent stem cell which one is totipotent stem cell listen first understand the concept of stem cell suppose this is a cell okay suppose this is a cell and this cell is dividing now listen the concept of stem cell is this if this cell divides there will be two cells 
right there will be two cells there will be what two cells now listen the basic concept of stem cell is this this cell suppose this is first cell this is second cell this second cell actually the second cell actually is added to the first population of cell that means the second cell is identical to the first cell but listen this first cell sorry this number one cell this number one cell will go on dividing okay this number one cell will go on dividing go on dividing and become suppose this this type of cell macrophage suppose any other cell listen that means whenever stem cell divides one cell forms another type of cell and the other cell is added to the mother population now listen the process of this that is production of two cells from one cell is called cell division right but process of conversion of a cell into completely a different category of cell okay is called differentiation differentiation okay clear this is called differentiation now listen we'll al always talk about these things in detail when we will talk about stem cell biology there is a separate class for that don't worry but understand this very basic thing this is differentiation right but in molecular biology in biotechnology what we do is we take a random cell and we convert this into a this type of cell that is which was on the verge of differentiation right then we follow this pathway and we create another type of cell suppose this that means from this cell we are creating this cell suppose this is cell a and this is cell c if we can reverse the pathways that is if we can convert cell a to cell 1 then what will happen then after that we can convert cell 1 into cell c this is called de-differentiation this whole process is called a to 1 and 1 to c this whole process is called de-differentiation this whole process is called de-differentiation okay D differentiation okay clear why we are talking about this why we are talking about these things in details not details but okay why we are talking about this so much because you should understand that erythropoiesis. what do you mean by the term erythropoiesis erythropoiesis means the division of pluripotent stem cell right division of pluripotent stem cell Okay, division of pluripotent stem cell, stem cell to form two cells and from this cell we will get RBC clear we will get RBC and all these intermediate cells have definite structures and function we will talk about this okay this is the actual you know format to study erythropoiesis let's start Now, listen, at first, you know, when we will talk about leukopoiesis, that is WBC formation, we will also state that, suppose this is pluripotent stem cell, okay, now listen, suppose this is a pluripotent stem cell I have drawn, okay, now listen with all your attention, how will you know this is a pluripotent stem cell, suppose in a bone marrow, okay, now listen, what is the site of erythropoiesis, site of erythropoiesis, Site of erythropoiesis is sinusoids of bone marrow. Right? Okay. For your you know convenience, what I am doing is actually for your convenience, what I am doing is actually I am drawing a vertical section of this. Suppose this is.
suppose this is okay now listen suppose this is a bone and suppose this is a bone marrow okay this is a bone marrow okay this is a bone marrow okay now listen red bone marrow produces rbcs right suppose this is a red bone marrow okay now this is a red bone marrow okay now clear now understand this basic thing that within the red bone marrows okay there are pluripotent stem cell present which are which just require a single you know activation and it can be trans and it can be converted into wbcs or rbcs listen suppose this is a cell this is a suppose pluripotent stem cell okay and this is a pluripotent stem cell and we need to convert this into an rbc this is the terminal product we need this is the terminal product we need okay the terminal product that we need okay now understand this very basic thing that is this is the terminal product we need now listen what is the peculiarity between this and this first of all just by looking at it just by looking at it suppose this is not rbc actually it is smaller than that like this right just by looking at this you can understand that this is suppose the stem cell and this is the product after differentiation you can understand that its size has decreased first point that is rbc is one of those cells which on maturation doesn't become bigger it becomes smaller okay now okay so now understand this basic thing this is a pluripotent stem cell okay this is psc pluripotent stem cell okay which is also known as hemopoietic stem cell or hematopoietic stem cell now let let us call it pluripotent stem cell now listen all the stem cells listen with all your attention all the stem cells and all the cells which are yet to be differentiated into rbc or their lineages have nucleoli that's the very basic thing you need to understand all the what all the stem cells and all the cells of erythroid lineage which are yet to be converted into rbc and their lineage that is intermediate normoblast late normoblast they have nucleoli that means one of the best characteristics of pluripotent stem cell is this they have two prominent nucleoli okay what is nucleoli yes it is nuclear organization center okay now listen i have already discussed what is nucleoli in your nuclear membrane transport video go through that okay so this is pluripotent stem cell okay now listen now this pluripotent stem cell undergoes division okay now this pluripotent stem cell undergoes division that means it will be converted into converted into two cells okay it's converted into two cells now again two nuclei two nuclei and this is again two nuclei two nuclei right these are these are what these are nucleoli sorry this is nucleoli not nuclei nucleoli okay this is the characteristics of stem cells and their lineages now listen so what is the second membrane second circular membrane what second circular membrane this is inside there this is the first membrane right this is cell membrane this is nuclear membrane and this is nucleoli there are two nuclei that's it okay now listen listen with all your attention now this cell will be added to the pluripotent stem cell you know population that's why it is a stem cell that is stem cell is a self regenerating cell okay stem cell is a re self regenerating cell okay that means two cells divide one cell divides and there are two cells you will get two cells and out of these two cells one of the cell will be added to the original population clear now this cell will now be converted into actually to rbc so 
again we can see that this is much more bigger with respect to the actual RBC right okay now listen what is the name of this cell this is called B F U E what do you mean by B F U E now listen what is B F U E first understand this B A F U E B F U E stands for burst forming unit erythroid what do you mean by these things I will teach you now listen this is called burst forming unit erythroid that is okay. what is this you should understand now listen what is burst forming unit erythroid now listen if you take these stem cells and if you treat them with proper stimulation what do you mean by the term stimulation if you treat them with proper cytokines okay. let me ask you all who is also watching the video they should also answer this name one cytokine which is useful for the production of red blood cell and white blood cell yes everyone who is watching the video should stop pause the video and they should you know think about that now tell me name one interleukin which is oh my god I have told that that it is interleukin okay now tell me what is the number somebody is saying four somebody is saying one somebody is saying there is no interleukin GMCSF okay I will teach GMCSF in another video it is interleukin 3 okay it is interleukin 3 which is absolutely necessary for all the lineages of WBC and RBC okay okay I will be talking about these cytokines which are important for erythropoiesis in another video okay now listen okay now listen what do you mean burst forming unit right that means when these cells were kept under laboratory conditions when these cells were kept under laboratory conditions they continuously divide they continuously divide that means a burst of division cell division takes place they continuously divide and a burst of cell division takes place that's why they are called burst forming unit they form a colony like thing if they form a colony like thing if they divide continuously they are called burst forming unit and if after division they form a colony they form colony forming unit right they will form colony forming unit that is CFU why it is erythroid this E this E stands for that this is a marker or you know language marker that this particular cell will actually convert into RBC that is the fate of this cell has already been sealed that is it will have to convert it into RBC now listen suppose BFUE again divides suppose BFUE again divides okay BFUE again divides and there will there you will get two cells what two cells again these cells this okay this is what two nuclei a two nucleoli two nucleoli okay now listen what is this this is C F U E but that is when these cells divide some cells will form a colony some cells will form a colony and they will be clumping together and they will form a colony that's why they are colony forming unit erythroid that means it's again a language marker for us that will be converted into erythrocytes okay now after CFUE okay after CFUE you should understand that what is the next stage now listen again this cell will divide again this cell will divide CFUE will now divide and form this cell
ओके नाउ वी नीड टू टॉक अबाउट सी एफ यू एंड दिस सेल्स नाउ ओके These are two nucleolides now, sir. Listen, this is called what? This is called pro-erythroblast. This is called pro-erythroblast. Okay. This is called pro-erythroblast. This is called pro-erythroblast. Now listen. What is the importance of pro-erythroblast? right you should understand this now listen you know what is the peculiarity of pro erythroblast anybody now listen pro erythroblast has a very you know unique surface that is unique say, sorry not surface cytoplasm suppose this is your pro erythroblast okay and this is your Proerythroblastic nucleoli. Now listen, the cytoplasm. Now listen. Okay, okay, wait. Now if you try to stain this cell with hematoxylin and eosin stain, you will understand that the cytoplasm is taking up good amount of eosin. That means what? From this observation. you can infer that cytoplasm is what is acidic or basic cytoplasm is basic why because it is taking eosin right eosin is reddish in color and eosin is acidic dye and it is taking and it is present in cytoplasm that means cytoplasm is basic because base reacts with acid right that means cytoplasm of proerythroblast is basic in nature okay they have got basic character why so this is suppose your pro erythroblast now my question is why do you think that pro erythroblast have a basic cytoplasm why this is because yes why because of the production of histone proteins no 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 histone proteins are present in the nuclei right right we are talking about cytoplasmic proteins now listen let's You know something called ribosome. You know something called ribosome, and what is ribosome? A ribosome is nothing but an accumulation of RNAs, right? Accumulation of RNAs, and to protect these RNAs from degradation and to give it a structure, some proteins are also there, right? That is ribosome is what? Ribosome is what? Ribosome is protein plus rrna right now many of you don't know that ribosomes are actually what made up of rrnas okay now listen to give it a structure and to give it a proper shape proteins are you know incorporated this is a latest theory actually i attended a seminar which was taken by the great venkatraman ramakrishnan or known by the name of venki ramakrishnan he actually told that he he was actually the you know one of the pioneer in the rna research he actually told that in the primitive time ribosome was actually made up of rna rrna okay but it was james watson who actually told him or you know someone else that proteins were incorporated into rna to make the ribosome proper okay clear okay now listen with all your attention possible in pro erythroblastic stage ribosome now listen in pro erythroblastic stage ribosome appears okay now due to the presence of ribosomes the cytoplasm becomes basic why because due to the ph of cytoplasm the proteins which are present in ribosome are basic in nature okay that's why this basic proteins bind with acidic stain that is eosin okay that means what i can do is i can actually do like this that is this is 
okay clear now now you should understand another thing that we have already discussed that we will talk about three basic things first that is the characteristics right and now comes the size what is the size of this cell you know the size of this cell is around 20 micron it is very much large why because rbc's are around 7.2 microns that means almost three times bigger than rbc these cells are okay almost okay so we have successfully converted cfuv into erythroblast now listen with all your attention possible on this earth listen cfuv that is colony forming unit erythroids are converted into pro erythroblast right now listen when pluripotent stem cell divide divides bus forming units these two bus forming units, one of them is added to stem cell you know population and another one that is suppose there are two cells cell one and cell two now the question comes why this second cell chooses to chooses to now the question comes why this second cell chose this pathway not this and why again this first cell chose this pathway because of certain cytokines okay one of the main cytokines which actually is involved in this differentiation now listen this is division and bfuv getting converted into rbc this is differentiation now listen in this differentiation process you should always understand the first cytokine or the first you know thing that should come into your mind that is not interleukin that is not interleukin 3 the first thing that comes into sh should come into your mind is erythropoietin okay burst forming unit burst forming units erythroid expresses erythropoietin receptor i will talk about this in details the signaling part today only now listen suppose if i tell you suppose i tell you bfuv cfuv pro erythroblast all these three cells and even early normoblast have erythropoietin receptor all these cells have erythropoietin receptor okay but if i tell you out of these cells which cell expresses the maximum erythropoietin receptor that means which cell have maximum affinity for erythropoietin the answer will be cfuv they expresses the largest number of you know erythropoietin receptor okay they expresses the maximum number of erythropoietin receptor okay and erythropoietin receptor actually follows jackstat pathway okay i will talk about this in details don't worry Mo in, now you should understand most of the cytokines also mm, you know follow jackstat pathway this is the very basic thing you need to understand okay most of the neurotransmitter most of the neurotransmitter follow g protein coupled receptor pathway most of the and most of the cytokines follow jackstat pathway okay this is a very basic thumb rule now now we will be converting pro erythroblast into what early normoblast okay 